Hello everyone, my name is Jocelyn, you may call me Joy, and today's video is going to be very odd, even for myself. So we're talking about period products, um, which is something that I have never had to use before. Uh, but this video is targeted towards people who do not menstruate, have not ever menstruated, um, who want to learn a little bit more about anatomy and what's involved in the whole process of menstruation. But if you are someone who does or has menstruated, stick around because you might learn something about people from the other side of, of, of life. And um, hopefully we can all come together in this learning experience. Okay, first thing to address is the fact that I am going to be using inclusive language throughout this video. That is mostly for the sake of accuracy, as well as obviously being trans inclusive. Um, so this includes words and phrases such as AMAB, assigned male at birth, AFAB, assigned female at birth, and also using the term people who menstruate as opposed to women who menstruate. Despite the fact that I feel like having a title that would say something along the lines of a men's guide to menstruation would be really punny and witty and catchy, it's not entirely accurate because trans men and non-binary people who menstruate do exist. Not all women menstruate. Not even all cis women menstruate. So saying that women do X or females do Y thing isn't entirely accurate biologically, scientifically, medically speaking. Hi there, I'm editing this right now and I realise that I have forgotten to mention one of the most important things about this particular part of the discussion and that is that calling women people is not something I think of or consider as being offensive. Saying the phrase people who menstruate includes women who menstruate and, and doesn't take away from someone's womanhood, right? Like I think that's I think that's logical. I think that makes sense. To be honest, I do think that any kind of pushback from people who are trying to enforce their language when it comes to insisting that only women menstruate, only women have a uterus, a vagina, this, that and the other, saying that a woman can't have a penis, all of this kind of discussion is really just rooted in transphobia. It's, it's all just trying to deny people like myself, our identities, and they are trying to find any linguistic kind of way that around it that they can do it so that they can kind of sound like they're just concerned about language, which is really just the proxy argument for we don't like the transes. I'm sure by now that the more internet savvy amongst the audience, you viewers watching this now, might probably be aware of a Reddit subreddit called r slash bad women's anatomy. Now, again, it's not only about women, but generally speaking, the female, assigned female body anatomy and the misconceptions and strange ideas that some people have about those bodies. Let me give you some examples. This guy I was talking to was saying how women play sports just as well as men. And he said, one time I was roughing a women's softball game on the full moon. And, and I was like, why does it matter that it was on the full moon? And he was like, well, you know, the full moon. Women on the full moon. And I was like, I don't get it. 
and and he was like periods and he thought all women just get their periods on the full moon and i thought it was really funny that he confused women with werewolves lycanthropy is a feminist issue or how about this historical botch job when trains were introduced in the u.s many people believed that women's bodies were not designed to go at 50 miles an hour lol at the fact that trains were only traveling at 50 miles an hour back then but let's continue and that their uteruses would fly out of their bodies if they were accelerated to that speed i have so much respect for historical women not murdering every man they know is it okay for a 12 year old to use tampons no pads I'm a first time dad, my daughter is not even at that age, and pads, 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 pads. I think there was a missing comma. I think it was supposed to say no, comma, pads. But anyway, tampons are really for when they are in their later teens and after a large penis has punctured the him. I think that's supposed to be hymen. And they now need a cork for the leak instead of a pad for the drip. Some people are not only ignorant, but willfully ignorant, and also use their disgust and revulsion as an excuse for this. I saw a girl with a blood stain in her crotch area earlier today. She obviously forgot to shove a tampon up there. If you can't control your bladder, you should just probably use pads instead all the time though. And this last one I found was downright ridiculous. This is why the lust of the flesh is evil. Even the women's reproductive organs are shaped like Lucifer himself. How much more proof do you need? Sex is evil because when man lays with the woman, he lays with the devil. We all came out of the woman and therefore we are all evil and born of Satan. Even you atheists. This is why we must repent to our Lord. It's the only way to heaven. The female reproductive system. Satanic ram's head. Makes sense! Oh. The leaps in logic these people go to is incredible. As I hope I've just demonstrated, more education is necessary. And that is what this the aim of this video is. For. Obviously, I don't think I'm going to get through to some random religious nutbag, but dear God, there are there are some people on, like that are just truly innocent when it comes to their ignorance. So, I myself am a victim of this. As someone who was socialised as a boy at school, I remember having uh, sex ed lessons like separate from those who are uh, assigned female and socialized as girls um this wasn't all of the sex ed lessons but it was true for the primary school that i went to um we had separate things there they showed us different videos about what was going on with like what was going to happen with our bodies in puberty and stuff like that um so it's no wonder then that there is some of this like ignorance flying around and the fact is that sex ed lessons in a lot of especially deeply religious conservative areas still refuse to teach sex ed properly when i was in secondary school i remember we did a few lessons about contraception, like this is a condom, this is a femidom, this is the coil, blah blah blah, okay, cool. None of that applies to me, of course, but it's still useful information to know. Um, I also remember making a, like a, a, a model of the female reproductive system out of like bits of paper. You just had a paper uterus that I had to colour in and then, oh look, there's a fetus and it goes inside and we wrap it with cling film because that looks like amniotic fluid and that 
really didn't teach me anything about periods <laughs> or menstruation or anything, you know? So, yeah, um, pretty basic stuff there. I could live to learn something here. So, I <laughs> I underwent a little bit of an experiment myself. So, taking a cue from the great Dylan Mulvaney, who famously kept period products in her handbag so that in case any of her friends needed them or any, you know, just random strangers in the bathroom needed them, she'd, she'd have one on hand and say, oh yeah, here you go. I was in the supermarket a few weeks ago and I was shopping as I normally do, checking out the, uh, the discount shelf and I saw this. It's a pack of 30 panty liners that were reduced to 30 pence. So I thought, hey, I'm going to do the same thing as, as Dylan. I'm going to do what she did and I'm going to keep some period products with me in my handbag so that in case anybody needs them that I'm out and about with, like I can just hand them out, right? And at no great cost to myself because 30p is practically nothing. Um, and then I thought, let's go one step further with these. <laughs> the experiment is that I would wear one and see how it feels for someone who does menstruate, for someone who has that experience. Like, what do you go through? How, how, how do these work? How efficient is this going to be? How comfortable is this going to be? I wanted to know. And I thought I would report my findings in the name of science to you, the YouTube audience. <laughs> sounds so silly, but I, I genuinely do want to know, right? I wanted to learn and grow. So before any of you TERFs in the comments section start ranting at me about how I'm misappropriating womanhood calm your jets okay I could be a cis man and still want to do this and find out what it's like for you to have to deal with you know let's quell some of that misunderstanding this is an exercise in learning in understanding and for a lot of people, starting periods, going through menstruation, this is a defining feature of their lives that they live with for a long time. This is basically an experiment for feminism. So here are my findings. <laughs> I found the pad was easy to place into the underwear. Um, I actually had to like stick it in and then pull it off and then stick it in a slightly different place because I have slightly different anatomy down there um, so I needed to make it work with what I've got um, and it sort of unstuck and stuck and unstuck and stuck and it was not tacky not sticky didn't ruin my underwear but it still held in place it adhered well in the position I also found it quite soft comfortable um, and basically I went around my day and not, not even noticing that it was there because it's such a thin, tiny thing, you know? Um, of course, I went around my day as normal because I wasn't experiencing a period with pain or cramps or bleeding, <laughs> but it was still an experience that I felt I got a little bit of value from. I also think that these would be really useful for anyone who for example, anyone who does have a penis, um, who has just had surgery down there or has just had a piercing down there and wants to not ruin their underwear with blood. That would be a really good use of something like these panty liners. Then I thought, well, okay, so I've worn it for a day, fine. 
That's only half the experience though. How good is this thing at absorption? I need to know. So at the end of the day, I just, I didn't measure, because of course I didn't think to measure. I just filled up my hand with water from the tap. I splashed it on there, like, right, let's see how long this takes to absorb. Um, and I couldn't, it couldn't have been more than like two tablespoons of water. And this thing stayed wet overnight. It was crap. These are, these are cheap panty liners, but I had no idea how much liquid to use in this experiment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I feel, I feel seriously misled by adverts that were on TV in the 90s with their, like, fucking jug full of the blue liquid. Like, five minutes later, oh, it's so dry. <laughs> Fuck off. Again, I'm not using a leading brand here, so that might have affected the absorption. That might have affected the results. I could have just used way too much liquid. <laughs> By, from my expectation, like, I found out that that didn't match reality. D does anyone else feel like they've been lied to by adverts for period products? So anyway, that was my experiment. That was my results. And that was going to be the end of my video. And then I realised that's so stupid. I can't make a video about periods and period products without actually consulting people who have experienced menstruation, <laughs> right? So I asked a couple of people that I know and happily they've responded. One person said, I found period products pretty functional. They did the job they were meant to do as I wasn't heavy. Pads were useful for getting out of swimming as a very young person. I guess I'd like people to know how severe the pain can be. It used to make my sister throw up and I would be doubled over crying. I found contraception that ceased my periods and never looked back. Although I don't bleed, I still have an emotional time of month, which is difficult to track. The emotional buildup before a period is very overwhelming, even more so if you also have mood slash personality disorders. Again, the emotional side of periods is something that I completely forgot about when I was doing this experiment, which is why it was so valuable to reach out to people who do experience this, have experienced this, and, and find out more about what they actually go through. <laughs> and yes, swimming as a child sucked for me too. Another response I got was, disposable ones, like tampons, can be uncomfortable you can never fully trust those or pads when the cramping is very uncomfortable, so it can be a worry. Same with cups. The pants they now sell are not as bad for comfort, but do not eradicate the fear of going through your clothes. My age group was indoctrinated to believe that periods and period products were embarrassing and something to be hidden, and I know many have passed that on further. They are expensive and taxed as a luxury product, there is a great deal of information on period poverty available. Many girls' education is peppered with absences due to this. I think she meant the shame there um, about the um, absences of, in knowledge. Even for, even for people who are socialised as girls still have gaps in their knowledge about their own anatomy. I think cramping and the emotional side is well known. Personally, I have three to five hours where it feels like something or someone is crawling under my skin. However, I can't remember before my sterilization reversal and daughter's arrival. I know from my degree, a friend did a lot of artistic work on period poverty and the man in charge tried to insist they were in a room out of the way with a warning was only red paint. And I think that last paragraph speaks volumes about the misogyny that goes into the way that people think about menstruation and period products. Like, yeah, these things are not a luxury, they are a necessity. And having an art display 
that represents not just blood, but female fertility and the struggles that period products have on a person financially was like shoved into a corner. And this is, this is not that long ago. Like, <laughs> my friend is talking about an art degree she did last year. It's got that kind of vibe of a man being disgusted by something that shouldn't be controversial. The last one got back to me with a full on essay. She says, I have heavy flow and brutal cramps on days one to three, so I don't tend to go out much on these days. I get more emotional, increased appetite, larger sore breasts, skin changes, bloating, depression, headaches, and need more sleep around my period. I feel less attractive, less energetic, less talkative, less outgoing, and generally want to stay under a blanket and read if I can. I tried disposable pads, tampons, menstrual cups, pads, and period underwear. I tried disposable pads when I first went through, I think that is supposed to be menstruation with just a typo there. Um, not much good. They always end up sticking to places you don't want them to. I found tampons convenient, but I didn't like applicators as they felt like they went in too far. So I use non-applicators, more comfortable. All tampons are drying and I didn't like the waste, so started using cups, which are good, a bit tricky to insert and messy while you get used to them. But I found they made my cramps worse. I switched to using reusable slash washable pads, which are great, except not very discreet. They can feel a bit like wearing a nappy on day one to three. Another reason to stay in. Another thing about pads is that they aren't that comfortable. Moisture held to the skin isn't, and even the most absorbent of materials emits some odour. Period underwear, thinks, is really good but expensive, but as my flow is heavy, I haven't quite relaxed enough to trust them yet and use pads as well. Problems or things to be aware of? Outrage at the fact that period products are taxed. I have to use them or walk around bleeding everywhere, so why the holy hell are they classed as a luxury item? Uh, misogyny, previous male experience has ranged from mystified but helpful to willful ignorance to openly mocking of a natural bodily function, disgust, etc. The plus side to this is being able to throw an unused tampon at an offender and watch him run. People don't seem to understand it's not just about bleeding. There's a whole load of other stuff that happens and it affects people in different ways. Workplace, there should be a national standard for period leave. People who suffer from debilitating cramps should be able to have time off without needing to use holiday or sick. Lack of understanding, part of being a menstruator is having a hormonal cycle which ebbs and flows, and as such, we are cyclical, shifting beings. A failure to understand this results in people expecting us to always be the same. Greater awareness is needed Menstruation isn't just about five days a month. That reminded me of someone who I used to work with when I was in um, Weatherspoon. Tiny, tiny girl. Such horrendous period pains. Horrendous period pains. She, sometimes she went home early because it was just that bad. Sometimes she would come in with a hot water bottle or a hot um, compress like strapped under her clothes you try being a cheery bartender like pouring pints and dealing with dickhead customers when you're going through like literal cramping and pain as well it just yeah I thought I had it bad before I finished editing this video I got another message from somebody else that I reached out to, so I really wanted to include her perspective as well. She says, I never got on with the brand Tampax. I always used to have to use supermarkets own brands, as Tampax expands width and length. Supermarket ones only expand width. 
I always preferred to use tampons as they felt more hygienic. I didn't like sanitary towels. This might be useful information for people who are starting menstruation or just about to start menstruation or somebody who knows someone about to start menstruation. Like, it's really a good idea to pass on this knowledge um, and also that not one size fits everyone. But anyway, back to the video. I would like to thank all the people who did reply to my messages. Um, I, I don't know if they wanted to be acknowledged publicly, so I've kept their names out of it. Hopefully you've learned a lot. I know I have. Um, and I think in conclusion that feminism advocacy should and must include trans women. Absolutely. But it must also include cis women and the majority of cis women do go through this. I mean, I believe that feminism is a movement to make all people of all genders equal. And that includes trans men who menstruate, non-binary people who menstruate, cis women who menstruate, anybody else who menstruates. Like, we should understand this. Not just as a society or like, you know, certain people in the medical profession whose job it is to learn about these things. But like, just in general, because about 50% of people do go through this or are going through this or will go through this or have gone through this at some point. And it would be really nice to be compassionate to those people. Anyway, thank you for sticking with me. And uh, <laughs> if I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments your thoughts, your experiences. I would love to read and share, you know, with, with the world. Like, have I missed anything? Can I repeat my experiment with more accurate results? Who knows? Um, but for now, um, take care. Non-binary is valid, goddammit. And eat some chocolate. Treat yourself. Bye. Um, it had, it, God. And I feel like I could li learn to live some, like, and he said, one time I was wrapping a woman's foot. No, it wasn't football. Oh God, I can't talk. This guy I was talking to was saying how women take,